Praise the Lord. My name is Amos, uh, like uh, Pastor Peter said earlier. I'm also a pastor here. Delighted to preach on this beautiful day. Our focus is massive ministry. Our friends online, very welcome. We hope you have been enjoying the service. So I'll treat a topic, a heart of service, the example of Dorcas. A heart of service, the example of Dorcas. Dorcas is briefly talked about in Acts chapter 9. So turn with me to Acts chapter 9. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42. Verses 36 to 42. So at Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is also translated Dorcas. Dorcas is in the Greek. Tabitha is in the Aramaic or Hebrew. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lida was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed on the Lord. Shall we pray? Lord, the entrance of your words give light. And they give understanding to the simple. This afternoon, we surrender our hearts. That, Lord, you permeate us with your word. That you speak to us, O oh Lord, and we will listen, O oh God. Allow us, Lord, to pursue your cause. And more especially, even as our focus is mercy, Lord, may your mercy, Lord, flow richly within our hearts, O oh Lord, and we'll be able to touch many, O oh King of Kings, to the glory of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 36 starts by saying at Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. Dorcas is mentioned only briefly in the New Testament book of Acts. Yet she has been the subject of poems, paintings, and art pieces. Dorcas, or Tabitha, lived in Joppa, an important port city overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. She kept busy there as a, seam, a seamstress, and her days were filled with activities that brought relief to the needy, and especially the widows. Dorcas is one of several devout women who appear in the book of Acts. It's clear that Luke, the author, considered each of them worth noting. But like Dorcas, two of them were successful businesswomen who also worked tirelessly to bless others and to glorify the Lord. And one of them is Priscilla. Priscilla ran a tent-making business with her husband, Aquila, in Corinth. But her greater contribution was as a teacher of the gospel when she chose to join the Apostle Paul's missionary team. You'll find that story in Acts chapter 18. The other one is Lydia. You can read about Lydia in Acts 16. She ran a lucrative dye business from her home in Philippi. She was wealthy and used a good deal of her resources to support Paul's ongoing ministry. But you see, unlike these two and the many other women recorded in Scripture, Dr. Luke refers to Dorcas as a disciple. And that is worth noting. She refers to Dorcas as a disciple, that she was a disciple who lived in, jo in Jota, a devout disciple, which in the Greek word is, the Greek used there is mathetria, used only in the New Testament once. Because the common Greek word for disciple is mathetes. And if it's in the plural, it's mathetai. But now because she is a female disciple, and she's being referred to as a, disciple, as a disciple, the Bible in the Greek refers to her as mathetria. Used only once, on one person, because of her significant contribution. Praise the Lord. Now, Dr. Luke is both a skillful and careful writer. There's a reason why he addresses Dorcas as a disciple. She must have fulfilled all attributes of a disciple. Let's talk about a few descriptors of who disciples are or should be. 
Number one, love. And this is the power that moves us to respond to another person's need without expectation of reward. And sometimes when we express love, we are doing it maybe as an opportunist, that maybe in the next one or two, three weeks, I will get something in return. But they are explaining here that it's the power that moves us, that moves you and me to respond to another person's need without expectation of reward. That is one descriptor of a disciple. And the second one is joy. It's an inward hope and exuberance despite outward circumstances. The circumstances may not be the best or the easiest, but that person is able to, to show joy and reflect joy even on their face that you can see it. Until they sit you down to talk to you what is happening in their lives, you probably may never know. And that does not stop them to do what they ought to do as a disciple, as believers of Jesus Christ. Joy differs from happiness, which relies on favorable circumstances. You are happy today because the circumstances are favorable. And tomorrow, because the circumstances are not very favorable, you are probably not happy. And joy is totally different. Peace is also another descriptor. The ability to remain calm amidst chaos, turbulent situations. Yesterday, I was officiating a wedding here. And I was telling this couple that, you know, there will be good, but also challenging times. But whether they are good or challenging times, we are expected to maintain that sense of calm as we navigate the different circumstances of life. The ability to remain calm amidst chaos. The other descriptor is long-suffering, the willingness to accept and endure irritating or painful situations. A few weeks ago, we talked about here grace, and I gave four different types of grace, and one of them was the enduring grace that God unleashes upon us when we are going through the toughest of times. We gave an example of Apostle Paul when he pleaded three times that the thorn in his flesh will be taken away, and he was told, my grace is sufficient for you. Long suffering, the willingness to accept and endure irritating or painful situations. And he never stopped serving or doing ministry just because of that thorn. He went on and on and on. The other descriptor is kindness. Kindness is expected of every believer and more so a disciple of Jesus Christ. And kindness has to do with generosity and consideration towards others. Generous. And generosity, there's no limit. There's no lower limit. There's no upper limit. You just be generous. Give of what God has given to you. Goodness is the other descriptor. And that speaks of moral excellence. Pastor Hassan always talks about good people. And the Kinyarwanda statement he loves using is avanaves. Some people are just avanaves. You see them, you look at their face, and the way they greet you, the way they approach you, and they are avanaves. Goodness. Faithfulness is the other descriptor. And this is enduring loyalty and trustworthiness. When you give someone your word, they can take it to the bank as well. That is enduring loyalty and trustworthiness. The other one is gentleness, power to control our reactions to difficult people and situations. And we are gentle. Self-control is the last one. The ability to restrain inappropriate passions and appetites. Praise the Lord. So the Bible is talking about Tabitha or Dorcas as a devout disciple. A devout disciple. And a few of these things appear or are reflected in scripture about her. She had love. She loved these widows. She gave herself to the needy. And actually says she had the general, the general understanding of the community. You know, loved them, but went on and did also charitable works to the needy. Full of good works. And we'll talk about that shortly. And the second one, apart from being a disciple, is deeds. That this woman was full of good, good works and charitable deeds, which she did. She took care of the needy. She took care of the widows. James chapter 1, verse 27 says, Pure and undefiled religion is you visiting the orphans and the widows in their time of trouble. In their toughest time. That is what the writer James says. That's pure and an undefiled religion. Finding all those that are needy, the vulnerable, the orphans, the widows, and reaching out to them and in touching their lives. Praise the Lord. And this is what Dorcas did. 
It's what is highlighted about Dorcas in Acts chapter 9. And you know that point came when Dorcas died. And Dorcas' death caused commotion in the church. Because she had had an, a, a lasting legacy on all these people whose lives she took. It, it sent shockwaves throughout the communities to the extent that the widow's affection for her led them to seek the Apostle Peter's help. Apostle Peter was in the vicinity. And then they sent a message to him that Tabitha, the disciple, is dead. He may have responded to their pleas in part because he had heard of her important work for the Lord in that area. But her legacy and impact led to her being restored to life. And friends, here we must emphasize this bit that we are all expected to do good works. Our salvation, our faith in the Lord is the foundation. Our faith in the Lord is the basis for our good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are saved for good works and not by good works. God saves us from sin and saves us for good works. Dorcas or Tabitha had a special heart for the poor and the vulnerable. And here at Christian Life Assembly, the vehicle through which we do this or we emulate Dorcas is mercy ministry. And Pastor Peter highlighted a few things. I also highlight a few things about uh, mercy ministry. The education sponsorship program is a highlight of this ministry. In 2020, Massey Ministry was sponsoring about 140 students, 140 students. Right now, currently, as we speak, the number has more than doubled. We are at 300 students being sponsored. <laughs> and that is all because of your generous support and contributions. The leadership would like to extend you know, appreciation, thanking you for your generous contribution to touch lives and send them to school. When they are 21, 23, and 25 years old, they will look back and now know that the gift of God that flowed through the people who sit in these pews, it is their turn now to pass it on because it is a cycle, an ecosystem that should never be broken. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the past four years, 55 students have completed their air levels. 11 of those have attained government scholarships. So what a good thing that you reach out to your pocket and touch a life, but they also put in the effort to be able to show you that they value what you're doing. A few of them had gr good grades, but they did not make the cut for the government scholarships, and there is a need there. We still have some of those who have performed well but have not been able to attain uh, uh, government scholarships, and they're ready to learn or study. Mercy Ministry is counting on us. Do you know how much they pay? For those who go to boarding schools per term, it's less than 100,000. Boarding school. 100,000, a few people, a meal at Kana Kazana. <laughs> eh? Just a few people meeting, six, seven, you know what? More especially when you have mango madness on the, eh, on the menu. Right? A hundred thousand per term. For those who go to boarding school, and the day scholars is less than 30,000. 30,000, it's 29 and something. So I want to encourage you and challenge you at the same time that at the end of the service, reach out to Aline. Where is Aline seated? Aline is seated at the back. For some of you do not, who do not know her, she's seated at the back. She's our master ministry coordinator. Reach out to her. And the rest of the team she's working with, they have forms. You can register for a season. You could register maybe to take up a child for a year. It could be two years. It could be three years. As God enables you. As God enables you. But let's continue touching these lives. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mass Ministry again has trained 73 in skills. I think you saw in the video. In the testimonies. They have learned tailoring. They have learned crocheting. They have learned knitting and many other skills. And you know now they are able to support themselves. Not now to come and receive the handouts. Actually, how the system works is that some of them at a certain point are winned off. So that they are able now to support a few others. And these who are winned off now make, are able to support themselves and their families. 
and 42 of those beneficiaries were able to start their own small businesses. And you know the gladness, the delight on their face because they can now fend and fight for their families. But it's been because of the foundation that you have set. And because of that, we are building and not going back. We want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that you join hands and be part of this Jacob and be part of this ministry that is doing great works here. Praise the Lord. And in terms of psychological support, 111 beneficiaries have received individualized counseling. They've been counseled about 111. Uh, 194 families in this year specifically received Mitwell de Sante medical insurance. But there's been an overall total since for the last four years, about 606 uh, families have gone through this receiving uh, medical insurance. Martin Luther, the father of the Reformation, said that good works are the seals and proofs of faith, for even as a letter must have a seal to strengthen the same, even so faith must have good works. Our faith in Christ, our faith in the Lord that has set us on a tone, on a foundation to continue doing that which God would, Jesus would have done himself if we were here. We are now his vessels. We avail ourselves and he uses us as his vessels in extending the kindness and the grace to those that need it in due time and due season. Praise the Lord. So how do we emulate Dorcas? By embracing a heart of service. And I'll unpack those two, heart and service. Heart is defined, or is um, the word heart in the Greek is cardia. If you have had cardi cardiologists, that is where it comes from. And it is the center, by definition, cardia is the center of our being. The capacity of moral preference, every desire, every choice that we have to make. The heart is the key in any choice we make, including whether we are to serve or not. It stems from my heart, from your heart. It is at the center of everything we choose to do. The heart drives passion for service in the kingdom. When you see people crazy for the kingdom, it is something that stems right at the center of their hearts. And they cannot just help but serve in God's kingdom. Praise the Lord. The heart determines our motives for service. It is therefore important that we examine our hearts as we choose to serve God. But the other key word there is service, diaconia, which means ministry, which means active service, which means done with a willing attitude. Active service done with a willing attitude, diaconia. And those that who give of themselves to serve are diaconos, where the word deacon comes from. For the believer, diaconia ministry specifically refers to spirit-empowered service guided by faith. It is the Lord's in-birthed persuasion. Praise the Lord. As we draw this sermon to a close, I want to unpack that acronym HEART. I've made an acronym there, and we'll unpack it. H stands for humility. Serving with a humble heart, needless to mention. Putting others before you. A heart of service is distinguished by one key feature. It gives without the thought of receiving in return. Because it's God who sees in secret and he will reward us in secret. Our work is to serve humbly and touch lives and give of whatever God has given us and reach out to those that need our support in time of need. And it is up to God to know when to reward you. Praise the Lord. And the second one is E, which is empathy. Empathy is the understanding and sharing the feelings of others, showing compassion. Romans 12, 15 says, rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep. A heart of service looks beyond self and sees God in the people it serves. It starts with that. That you see God in the people that you want to serve. That should be our motivator, irrespective of their backgrounds. And we find all these in our families. We find them in, the com in our communities. And we have to serve them. Mahatma Gandhi made this astounding quote on service. He said that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. That is the best way to find yourself. Is to lose yourself in the service of others. A stands for action. 
And this is taking practical steps to serve others and meet their needs. One of the, the most practical steps, even as we celebrate this day or this ministry, is just joining the Massey ministry and be part of it. Take action today and be part of uh, what is happening in, the, in that ministry. R stands for treating everyone with dignity and honor. Treating everyone with dignity and honor. Everyone, not some. Everyone with dignity and honor. Praise the Lord. And if you have been giving them handouts, it needs to get to a point where it is elevated to a hand up. Hold their hand, teach them a skill, help them start a business so that when they get to that point, like those families, they are celebrating that they are able to fend for themselves now. They have been weaned off and they owe it to the generous contributions and the, and the upskilling and the trainings that they have received through this ministry. The last one is timeliness, occurring at an opportune time, every time. It could be just a season. It could be just a minute. It could be an hour. And your discerners are up. You just realize that it is time to give. It is time to support. It is time to do something here. And Galatians chapter 6, as we bring this sermon to a close, verse 9 says, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. With all our eyes closed and our heads bowed, Reflecting on this message, a heart of service, and at the same time reflecting on what has been shared in light of this vehicle that God has given us here at Christian Life Assembly, Mercy Ministry. What is your role going to be? What is your commitment today? What is your action step? Do you see the people that you need to support? Are you able to see those that you need to reach out to? Are you able? May God open our eyes. May God touch us afresh. May God direct our thoughts. May God continue to guide us as we stand with those in need. And he alone knows how to enable us. He invites us to come across as vessels and that we'll be able to be used of him, we avail ourselves and he himself give us. He gives us the power. He gives us the wisdom. He gives us the strength to go about what we ought to do in different seasons. We lose ourselves to serve others. And may God continue to do a work in us. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for reminding us, O oh Lord, that you who is rich in mercy, you unleash mercy to flow through our hearts so that we are able to touch and impact others, O King of glory, in our communities, Lord, in our schools, in our families, and in the different places where we find ourselves, O God. And it's you who does that, O Lord. And Lord, now we want to continue yielding and surrendering, surrendering ourselves to you, O Lord. And Lord, pray that you continue to touch us and speak to us and encourage us, Lord, as we need you, O oh Lord. We want to see you speak to us. Open our eyes and more especially our spiritual eyes that we'll be able to see beyond the ordinary and know that it's you in need and that, Lord, the least of those that we touch, as you say in your scripture, King of Kings, that is exactly what you desire. We pray, King of Glory, that you reach out and refresh those who refresh others, O oh Lord. That you reach us, O Lord, reach out and convict those who need to be convicted to do something in light of our subject this afternoon. Be with us, Lord, as we head out, as we embrace this new week. May your blessing go ahead of us. May you shine your face upon us, O King of Kings. And allow us, O Lord, to meet in another day, O King of Glory, to celebrate your goodness and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.